Right. Okay, that took a little bit more time than I thought it was going to take. That really did. Um, yeah, I was. I had to clean out my temporary memory so I didn't have any audio problems. Hi, right, guys. Um, let's see. Oh, God, there's a lot of you already here. Nice. Requiem says he is fortifying this chat. Declonius says he's besieging this chat. Yes. Hobbit's here. Arnux is here. Alfarius is here. Let's see. Phalius is here. It's Sean, Sean, I, I, Sean, Sean, I think is, I'm, I'm, I think I'm not an idiot here. Um, Jared Hicks is here. My U is here. Buddy is here. Cartos is here. And there's Ronnie Requiem. Hey. Okay. So, as of this Monday, um, I'm starting a new position. And my time is going to radically change. Um, I don't know what my time is going to look like. Now, that's, of course, a bad thing. It's also a good thing. I, um, I have issues when I'm not, you know, actively employed. And I haven't been for about three weeks now. And I guess you guys kind of noticed that. Miguel, how's it going, bud? Chicken, chicken wing analogy. <laughs> Nice. And friendly wallpaper. Carissa, everyone is Alfarius. Um so what's gonna happen is I'm gonna go I'm gonna start working next week. I'm gonna figure out my schedule. I'm going to continue po like continue posting reactions, stuff like that, and I'm going to keep on working on my projects, um, Commissar Story, um Five Ish Minute Lore, everything like that. I'm gonna be uh, looking forward to all that. Oh my god, it's hot in here. Um, but past that, uh, I'm going to talk at the end of this just a little bit more about it if you guys have any questions about that. And then we will move right on. Then we will move right on. Okay, so, All Guards and Party, Episode 2, Dude, Where's My Psyker? Alright? Let's, um... I want to get into that, but then I want to get into something else. Somebody sent me a message on Discord a little bit ago, and this is actually from The Cursed Knight, and it says, um, who would be your dream team of four? Like, this is, I like this idea. Your dream team of four, it can be from any fiction or any faction, even crossovers, okay? So, give me some ideas. My first thought is Rosalyn from Dragonlance. Grimaldus, of course. Um, Sigismund, duh. I can't think of who the fourth one would be, though. Alright. The introduction of a certain snub nosed cruiser featuring a warp infested poker room. Imagine <laughs> Alex Jones was a space marine. Literally the Black Templars. <laughs> In any case. Alright, so let's get started. And I gotta press the right buttons here. Here we go. This is the ongoing tale of a bunch of guardsmen who got drafted into the Inquisition after their regiment was reduced to a mere 37 men by a combination of orcs, heretics, more orcs, tyranids, and of course, their own leadership. Nice. Currently, they're working for an Inquisitor that is the 40k equivalent of Professor Oak. He provides teams and missions to interrogators who need to get some leadership experience before becoming full inquisitors. The lot of these guardsmen is rather thankless. They are matched up with five other less combat focused team members assigned to an interrogator and sent out to fight the enemies of the Imperium. Thanks, Jarrett. <laughs> Our story starts with Nubby and Twitch vainly trying to open up the locked exit to the shuttle after being told that their new squad contained three psychers in addition to an assassin, tech priest, and the interrogator himself. Oh, God. Sarge is screaming internally as he remembers that the last psychers he worked with accidentally summoned a bloodstorm and turned into a demon host the second <laughs> they tried to do anything. Doc is captivated by the sight of a fat little man-child chewing on a seat's headrest. Heavy has decided that this is all above his pay grade and is making himself comfortable by lying across a row of seats, 
The interrogator explains that the team is on its way to find out why a planet has not been supplying psychers to the black ships. Oh god. One of the psychers asks Sarge to stop screaming. It's making it hard to think. The All Guardsmen Party and Dude, Where's My Psyker? <laughs> Current psychic phenomena count, zero. Current perils of the warp count, zero. Oh god. So no shit, there we were. Stuck on <laughs> no a small shit, there ship we were. With three psychers on our way to perform a top to bottom search of an entire planet. All for the sole purpose of finding more psychers. We did not have high hopes for this mission. Hell, some of us had serious concerns about whether we'd even still be sane when we got there. The journey itself wasn't so bad. Instead of being guests on a navy vessel, our interrogator actually had his own small ship. Nice. Sure, almost all the space was taken up by our interrogator's huge-ass cogitator array, but at least we didn't have any navy ratings trying to take our weapons away, or bitching at us for setting tripwire traps in the corridors. <laughs> Why? The problem was the people we had to make the journey with. We didn't like any of the psychers. One was a smarmy tool who spent far too much time talking and making himself look pretty. Okay. Then there was the weaselly creep who constantly scanned everyone's thoughts and ratted to the boss. And finally, there was this psychotic man-child who would occasionally throw telekinetic temper tantrums. We called them Face, Snitch, and Nutjob, respectively. <laughs> Compared to these guys, the snooty social assassin chick and the incredibly anti-social tech priest weren't that bad. Uh, Diclonius, the girls in Panzer video, I have so many, so many, so, so, so many questions about Japan after that. Um, but there is an abridged series, episodes are five minutes long. I can do five minutes, I think. The interrogator was infinitely worse. Our interrogator was Adept Path, and apparently some sort of data wizard. Okay. It took the entire ship just to carry all of his cogitators, and he loved those machines like they were his children. Unfortunately, the bastard wasn't a complete shut-in. Instead of staying in the dark with his cogitators, he constantly held meetings and forced us all to attend. Not a day would go by without him calling us together to update everyone on what little clues he'd found, or check up on how we were preparing for the mission, or lecture us on proper inquisitorial behavior. Okay. It was horrible. Our previous mission, we happily ignored everyone else on our team while they happily did likewise. This time... We had an interrogator who had never used a gun in anger, giving us unwanted advice about combat drill, kit loadout, regulatory compliance, and freaking etiquette. <laughs> this was all done in a tone of smug benevolence. He understood that we were just dim-witted manual laborers and couldn't be blamed for not being as smart as he was. That's why it was his duty to do all of the hard thinking for us. The cherry on top nice. of this was Snitch, who would report what we were thinking to the boss. I would get fired so quick from every job I've ever had if somebody could read my mind. Every time those lectures filled Tyler, us with yes, murderous rage, the little weasel would go and tell on us. Then we'd get a second lecture on proper attitude towards authority. God Emperor, we hated him. Eventually, we arrived at the planet, which had earned the Inquisition's attention by providing the black ships with nothing but pathetically weak psychers, completely unsuited for any use whatsoever. There were probably dogs out there with more psychic talent than the strongest psyker sent to the ships. But when the black ships had scanned the planet, there were no unsanctioned psychers running around, so they took the pathetic tithe and left. Now we were here to find out where all the psychers that should have been on a planet of this size had gone. The gist of all the little briefings we suffered through was that a disappearance on this scale meant that we were either dealing with corruption in the government, 
a massive cult, some kind of psyker eating demon, or Eldar. This meant that, unless proven otherwise, we had to assume that everyone was in on it. So until the interrogator got some sort of evidence, we wouldn't have any outside support. Uh, Sean, what were you what were you saying that you were right about? Send Snitch to the black ship and he needs to become emperor food? Yes. Yes, do it. The posh assassin chick and Face did all the social legwork. They would circumspectly shake people down for information while we loomed in the background, or preferably down the street at a cheap diner. Apparently, they were very good at it, since everyone aside from us thought they were absolutely delightful to be around. Nice. At the end of each day, they would transcribe everything they found and beam it up for the interrogator to process. The other information gathering team involved the tech priest and snitch hanging around in the equivalent of an unmarked van. <coughs> they spent all day driving around hacking wireless networks, scanning people's thoughts, and dumping all the information back to the boss in orbit. Oh my god. We got to drive the van and fetch... Okay, I'm looking like I'm... It looks like my connection is lagged out. One second. Looks like my connection is lagged out and I'm not seeing anything going on here. Okay, there we go. Okay, we're back. We're back. All right. So I didn't want to keep on going if uh, my connection was lagged out. Snacks. We didn't all get to leave the ship. One or two of us were always stuck at base since it was apparently our job to babysit the nut job psyker. Yes. It really was babysitting, too, because we'd have to clean up the messes he made, get food for him, calm him down when he threw a fit, and entertain him when he got bored and started pulling rivets out of the walls with his brain. Poor Doc got that job more than anyone else. He just wasn't very good at saying no. Wow. Aside from that, though, it was an improvement over the trip out there. We were occasionally able to get away from our teammates, and whoever was backing up the social team got to visit some pretty high-class parties. It was always a nice opportunity to snag some good food and, in Nubby's case, pocket the silverware. There you go! Oh, After a while, the... In okay, bit of naval history for you guys. Um, <clears throat> in the officer's... In, in, in officer's training... It was told to the officers to be mindful of the silverware around the enlisted because the enlisted men would steal it. That was actually a thing that was in the off that was pretty much in the officers' training manuals all the way up until 1920. It was a thing. Uh, Sean, I did not see your reply. I've been looking for it for a couple of seconds here, and I I can't see it. I'm sorry, bud. Interrogator called us together and informed us of his brilliant deductions and masterful analysis. Oh, I can't wait. These involved money trails, newfound political power, falsified ship manifests, and other stuff we didn't really care about. It all boiled down to someone in the government is selling the psychers off planet. Once our interrogator was done explaining his genius, he had everyone but himself rebased to a few floors of apartments, located in one of the larger cities on the planet. After the team was settled in, he sent us to take some long, hard looks at a bunch of nearby banks. We enjoyed being away from him and his constant meetings, and quickly turned the building into a proper guard barracks. Which is go. to say that Twitch wired the place up with dozens of traps, <laughs> Nubby started fencing stolen goods out of the garage, <laughs> and the rest of us built a set of barricades between us and the outside world, as well as between- Do you hear those pugs? Do you hear those pugs? Us and the rest of our damned team. It felt good to be home. Before long, Word came down that the interrogator had identified the operations banker, and the whole ground team was sent off to get some answers out of him. 
So while Heavy hung out in the van with the socially unacceptable members of the team and ignored the ugly little man prodding his brain and demanding candy, the rest of us infiltrated the bank. That is to say, we put on suits, which succeeded in making us look exactly like guardsmen in suits, there you go. and marched behind Face and the Assassin into one of the planet's largest banks. Oh, this is just going to turn out great. There was a little bit of trouble getting through security, which was entirely our fault. All of us had kept our laser rifles underneath our suits. And what? Twitch was still carrying a few debt packs. What? We weren't very good at disguises. No. Luckily, between Face doing some psyker stuff and hey, the priest's hack van messing with the security systems, we got in fine. After we were past security... Face and the assassin greased a few palms and screwed with a few minds. Before long, we were sat down to a nice discussion and a tea time with the banker. Well, they sat, us guardsmen stood around and looked ominous. <laughs> Various falsified credentials were shown. Okay, seriously, I cannot imagine something more like less intimidating than looking at somebody who's obviously carrying a full-length assault rifle underneath a suit jacket. Because if you can't figure out that everybody can see that, you're an idiot. Psychic tricks were used, and a discreet uplink was attached to a cogitator. Then, everyone left happy and healthy. We decided- Give me a second, guys. I thought the hospitaler was coming out, that's why they were going nuts so, but uh, apparently they are upset about other reasons. Give me one second, I will be right back. Um, I'm going to leave the audio on so you can hear them yelling at me. <laughs> one second. I'm just going to calm them down. Okay, Pugs. Okay, Pugs. Somebody, somebody in chat said that Volcana saw an Eldar. That's why she's freaking out. She does it every time the Volcana. I know, I know. It's all good. Ah, oh, yes. There we go. There we go. Okay. Turning this back on. Kablam. Sorry about that, guys. It was the hospitaler. She was walking. Uh, she was walking the big pug. And every time she walks the big pug, the little ones get enraged. And yes, if you heard the peeps, we still have those things in my living room. Oh my god, help me! I to exit via the back way so as not to trouble security again. And also because Nubby had wheeled out the tea trolley when we left. The boss and the rest were pretty excited about what was found on the banker's cogitator. The next few days were spent in relative Ronnie. peace while the interrogator worked with the rest of the team to map out a web of cor- Hey babe! Bring in Perturabo! Corruption and bribery. This lasted <laughs> right up until <laughs> Snitch called us one evening and said a large group of hitmen was moving through the empty floor below us. We were locked and loaded within seconds and started laying fire into the hitmen from multiple sides before they even hit oh, the edges. Oh, Jesus. Of the <laughs> Listen to them. Mommy left the room. I know, I know. It, it's good, it's good, it's good. Alright. Okay. He is angry. Yeah, I know, he's angry. He's he always angry. Pissed. Oh, jeez, oh, jeez. Oh, he is pissed. Alright, behold, Perturabo. Look at his tail feathers. I know, I know, Shut around I know. So we can see his butt. <laughs> 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 know, yes, Perturabo. He is a mighty chicken now. He is a mighty chicken. We make him flap his wings like a warhawk. Yes. <laughs> Look at right. his butt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she thinks she thinks that this is the best thing on the planet. Like flat out, she she honestly thinks this is the best thing on the planet. In any case, there we go. Hey, Connor. All right. Look at those wings. I know. 
All right, I'm getting back to this, okay? Okay, come on. Yes, tiny, tiny Arco. You might need to close this door. Yeah, uh, babe, just pull up and then in. Yeah, our door's messed up. In any case. Perimeter. We had good cover, good firing lines, knowledge of local terrain, superior weaponry, much better training, and the element of surprise. It was a slaughter. We actually do have the one last called Muggle Dorn. were pinned down by Heavy and Twitch, while the rest of us flanked them. When everything went dark, and horrific screaming started. Oh, that's always a good sign. When the lights returned, all the hitmen, dead or alive, had been reduced to chunky salsa, and we could hear Nutcase giggling upstairs. Yay. This killed the mood. <laughs> Everyone eyed the psyker nervously, and we packed up our shit and got the hell out of there before the authorities showed up. We elected to exit via the garages in a cargo truck, while the rest of the team used the shuttle on the roof. None of us wanted to be anywhere near the psychers after that show. Yeah, no. Also, Nubby and Twitch didn't want to leave anything behind. Psychic phenomena count? One. Perils of the warp count? Zero. I got a we feeling rebased that, to... I got a feeling this is going to be a recurring theme that's going to be nightmarish in the extreme at the end. Another almost identical set of apartments, and went about guardifying it again. Guardifying? Except this time, Twitch was given free range on the entire buffer floor instead of just the entrances and windows. While this meant that entering our base via the main entrance took about 15 minutes and carried a very real risk of grisly death, <laughs> we knew that people were actively trying to kill us. Also, we didn't want to depend on anyone who turned bodies into chunky salsa and giggled about it for our perimeter security. Failures, did you have to say that? Nuggle Dorm Storm Beak. Uh, why? Alright, alright, yes. Hey, it's the Lone Guardsman, what's up, bud? The rest of the team started using air transport exclusively after the assassin nearly lost a hand when she didn't follow Twitch's entry instructions correctly. Nice. <laughs> after a few days at our new base doing scan trips and otherwise laying low, Snitch found a young nascent psyker powerful enough to be worthwhile. So our team of elite inquisitorial agents started <laughs> staking out a toddler. Wow. Our unmarked vans followed the kid night and day, from his hab to the daycare to the playground and everywhere else you might take a toddler. Oh, Imagine come five on. heavily armed men no. all clustered around a screen watching a kid being pushed on a swing, while behind them an undeniably creepy bugger relays what everyone in the playground is currently thinking, and a psychotic man child picks his nose and mutters to himself. <laughs> Eventually, our weird stakeout paid off. A bunch of suits showed up and grabbed the kid and his mother. So no shit, there we were. No shit, Five there we were. Five guardsmen and two psychers in the middle of a playground chasing a bunch of G-men carrying a struggling woman and a small child. The woman and child were screaming. The G-men hey, were slacker. calling for backup. Our psychers were yelling about one of the G-men being a blunter. Blunter? And while no. we all had our guns out, none of us wanted to open fire in the middle of a playground. We were gaining on them, being a sprinter is a survival trait in any guardsman. But right as we reached them, one of them slapped a button on their chest and another one of them started to float into the air as the surrounding area was covered with frost. We all immediately slammed into an invisible wall and were scattered across the ground while Snitch stopped and started muttering to himself and gesturing. None of us wanted to be in the middle of a Psyker fight, no. so we flanked the invisible shield, left Heavy to cover the enemy Psyker, and resumed the chase. The G-Men had gone to ground in a playscape and opened fire on us with small arms, but we're having- They're having a gunfight in the middle of a playground. And the bad guys have taken refuge and are using a toddler's fortress for cover. 
I being love trouble this. because the child was apparently emitting random bursts of static electricity. Nice. We decided that survival was more important than civilian casualties and returned fire from whatever cover we could find. And since we were damned good at our jobs, things went pretty poorly for the G-Men. Good. We nailed most of them in the first few volleys, which convinced the last <laughs> one to keep their heads down while we flanked them. Behind us, Heavy was laying stubber fire into the enemy psyker's shield, and Snitch was pressing him hard. Then, with a little pop, the enemy psyker disappeared. While Heavy and Snitch watched the spot where the psyker had been, we rushed the remaining G-Men. Our interrogator was helpfully reminding us over the Vox that he wanted prisoners, so we charged in to beat the shit out of the last few survivors. <laughs> Unfortunately, at this point, their backup arrived in the form of an unmarked government flyer, which immediately began to lay down some serious suppressive fire. This was higher stakes than we were ready for, so we bugged the hell out while the remaining G-men piled in with the kid and his mother. Okay. The flyer wasn't done with us, though. As soon as its doors were closed, it lifted off and got ready to do a strafing run. We hit the dirt and dodged the first pass like true guardsmen, while behind us, the enemy psyker had reappeared with another pop and the fight resumed. Yay. This time, the fight was over in seconds. The nut job had finally caught his fat ass up with us, and with a little schlorp, the enemy psyker turned inside out. Oh. That done with, both the psychers and Heavy turned their attention to the flyer, which decided that it was time to cut its losses and get the hell out of here. As we got back up out of cover, the interrogator called us to tell us the assassin and face had successfully tagged the flyer with a tracer, and the tech priest would shortly be picking us up to assault whatever facility it landed at. Psychic Phenomena Count? Three. Perils of the warp count? One. Yeah. Apparently, some minor detail about the G-Men or the Flyer gave the interrogator the evidence he needed to safely call in official support. Okay. After he was done bitching at us for not capturing anyone, or stopping the Flyer, or whatever else we did wrong, our interrogator told us that a squad or two of Arbites would be assisting us. Actual Arbites? Um, that's going to be a bad sign. Hey, thanks, Slackers. Sevatar versus Talos Valkaran. Who would win? Sevatar. Sevatar, easily. Sevatar was the only one to... The only one besides Korn to beat Sigismund in a straight-up engagement. And, you know, Sevatar cheated, but at the same time, he's the only one that really... He's the only one that did besides, you know... Corn special golden boy. Nubby was understandably nervous about being around what were nominally law enforcement officers, and none of us were happy Jackson. when the interrogator explained that he was only bringing in the Arbites because he thought we were incompetent. Fuck! But overall, <laughs> <it's> been... <laughs> Shit! Yeah, Mr. Rock, I don't know where Prophet is. This was well received by us guardsmen. More bodies between us and incoming fire is always welcome. Doubly so if they had heavy armor and good fire discipline. The facility we landed at was large, grim, and obviously a shuttle port. Therefore, our job in this raid was to capture any available information Arco about where the here. shuttles would be going. So, while two squads of Arbites had fun clearing the place room by room with judicious use of shotguns and shock mauls, we kept a secure perimeter around the rest of our team as they uplinked cogitators and mind-scanned people. Aside from a few runners and idiots too dumb to surrender, we didn't have any excitement until one of the Arbites squads found the Psyker holding area. As the Arbites closed in, one of the G-Men apparently decided that the situation was unsalvageable and released the Psychers. Under the cover of a dozen psychically gifted children freaking the hell out, they punched through the Arbites squads 
and headed right towards us. That's or a problem. Or more likely the flyer we were examining. We opened fire as the heavily armed G-men entered the hangar and had them pinned in the hallway until Sergeant Heavy's cover got blown apart by a fireball. Once again, we found ourselves caught in a psyker duel. It was three on three, no. and this time, Nutjob wasn't curb stomping them. <laughs> the fight seemed evenly matched. Our psychers stood there and grimaced a lot, and occasionally manifested horrible smells or small earthquakes. Their psychers sat in cover and did likewise. Oh, um, when fireballs start flying, that's when I just want to leave. Um, no way. ATTENTION CITIZEN! Multiple third parties have- <laughs> Yeah. Um, once you're slacker, the Hell's Reach audiobook is absolutely outstanding. Um, the Armageddon Omnibus is absolutely wonderful. ATTENTION sh <laughs> We didn't have line of sight on any of them, and when we tried to toss in a grenade, it got slapped back at us halfway through its arc. No. We weren't exactly sure what to do, but after the fourth creepy occurrence, we decided it was time to use our initiative to end this shit before someone else summoned a demon. Yes, let's do that. Sarge appropriated a nearby forklift, drove it outside the hangar. Yes, the forklift is a mighty weapon. It is the best weapon of war we have. And then we slapped a bunch of debt packs on it. We turned it yes! towards the outside wall of the hallway the psychers were holed up in, put a brick on the pedal, and blew the entire hallway into rubble before anyone noticed what was going on. It surprised the hell out of us when the dust cleared and two of the psychers were still there, hiding under a shield. But it didn't last long after that. Don't summon him, Isaiah. With a hellish bang, one of the psychers <laughs> shot into the air and splattered against the shield. Attention, citizen! We have been trying to contact you about your vehicle's extended warranty! <laughs> there you go. The mighty forklift. Thanks, Audit. Thanks, Audit. Um, the, yes, forklift warranty. <laughs> and the last psyker immediately turned inside out. Yes, yeah, Star of Terror for forklift the certified. Job giggling back in the hangar. Oh, God. Psychic phenomena count? Eight. Perils of the warp count? Two. That was the last of the resistance. We poked through the military hardware that was left behind while the rest of our team did inquisitorial stuff to the surviving G-men and their cogitators. Inquis inquisitorial stuff means public execution. How would you rate a team of Grimaldus, Asmodai, Sigismund, and Rylanor? Um. Oh my god. I... I think that they would murder anything with legs. Mayu, which series should I start with? Eisenhorn or Gaunt's Ghost? Honestly, if you're just getting into 40k books, um, Gaunt's Ghost is a very, very new person friendly to the lore and how everything goes. Gaunt's Ghost is most people's introduction. Um, but if you're looking for something more a little bit, a little bit more lighthearted and fun, I would recommend the Kyphus Kane series of books, the first one being The Emperor Protects. Um, but if you really just want to deep dive into some old lore, of course, the Horus Heresy series. Uh, Jackson Eagle says Eisenhorn. After they were finished, we packed up our loot and headed back to base to rest and rearm while the interrogator played with all the data we got for him. We were assured that before long, he'd know where the psychers had been sent from the processing facility, and- Okay, hold on a second. I just thought about that. So, Grimaldus, who can, who can literally complain people back from the dead, Asmodai, who literally forces people to repent as a lifestyle choice, Sigismund, who purposely goes out to kill people- who are, have tr betrayed the Emperor, and Rylanor, who waited over 10,000 years to kill someone who had betrayed the Emperor and made them all look bad. 
you're talking like the that that like the sisters of battle would have to change their name. They would literally have to change their change the name of one of their squads because you couldn't have the Repentia anymore because that would be the Repentia team. Because no matter what happens, one, they will wait forever to kill you. Two, Sigismund, they will kill you. Three, they will make you repent while killing you. And four, if you fail to repent when they kill you, Grimaldus will just bring you back to life and Asmodai will make you repent. It's Lords of Recap. <laughs> Jesus. Um, let's see, what else? Just not Drago. No, do not read anything by Ian Watson. Anything. And we're told to get ready to launch another assault as soon as he had a target. Being guardsmen, we knew that the best way to prepare for an assault is to eat a good meal and catch as much sleep as possible. There you go. So as soon as our kits were prepped, we all hit the sack and while the rest of the team watched the perimeter. This meant that while we were all deep asleep, with the exception of Twitch, who merely dozed off with his laser gun pointed at the door and the safety off, <laughs> when a second assassination team got through our outer perimeter. The enemy must have seen the remains of their last team and decided that the Psykers were the primary threat, because this team had at least one untouchable with it. Ooh. Unfortunately for them... Untouchables don't do anything to stop booby traps. <laughs> the whole team had slowly cleared a small path across the floor that Twitch had trapped and reached the big expensive security door that led to our makeshift barracks. They formed up behind their best infiltrator and got ready to storm the place as soon as he hacked the door controls. Then the door opened and they had exactly... 0.25 seconds to express surprise that anyone would tape several short fuse grenades to the inside <laughs> of a top of the line security door. This woke us all up, and really? Twitch being Twitch, he'd put an entire clip and two frags into the open doorway before anyone else was upright. He <laughs> 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 Isaiah Bannister. I shall trust the name Ian Watson. That's horrific, but why are we chanting Sewer Goblin and Gussie? Okay, so, um, Isaiah, have you ever seen If the Emperor Had a Texas Speech Device? If you have not, I fully recommend the channel Bruva Alpha Boosa to you. Um, and because everything that he does is literally gold, and it's not exact, it's... It's not exactly new to lore friendly type material, but even the most based, like even the most basic understanding of fantasy, will be able to get you through the door. Um, and the reason people are chanting Ian Watson Sewer Goblin is because that is how he was referred to in a certain Voxcast publique that was done by the Emperor and his custodians probably didn't hit anyone since the six grenades taped Ian Watson's sewer goblin extraordinaire to the inside of the door had vaporized everyone near it Jesus but he sure as hell convinced their rear guard to start falling back I fucking love not Twitch. that it did them any good before the rest of us were on our feet Twitch hit the remote detonator for the every single mine he'd placed below us the entire buffer floor was blown to shrapnel, taking the rest of the assassination team with it and setting off alarms up and down the entire block. There you go. Luckily, the building was non-flammable and sturdily built. So, aside from a very rude awakening, no one we cared about was hurt. <laughs> Sarge decided that nap time was over, so we... Sarge decides his nap time is over. Nice. Uh, thanks, Slacker. I saw a battle report where Sigismund and his Imperial Fist took down Mortorian and his Death Guard. I'm not surprised. I am really not surprised, especially if he had the full Templar company with him. Um, Sigismund has very particular talents when it comes to assault, so I would not be surprised to see that happen. 
Sean, please be advised, I am in Eastern Washington, thus these chats are found, are tend to be somewhat complicated. Oh, uh, okay. He kitted up and waited for the word from our interrogator. Before Thank you, long, Slack. It came. I appreciate it, bud. I he really pinpointed do. a rogue trader that was receiving psychers and carrying them to off-world slave markets. Okay. A joint naval and Arbitais force would meet us in orbit, and we would board the trader before they made their escape. Our primary objective was to capture the senior crew members and find their contact within the local government. Secondary objectives included retrieving any psychers currently on the ship, capturing the navigational and financial logs, and not blowing the ship up like you blew up our base. Are all <laughs> guardsmen this incompetent? <laughs> so no shit, there we were. So no shit, there we on were. On a naval boarding shuttle, on the way to capture a rogue trader, and his retinue from a ship filled with captive psychers. Oh, that's fun. We were not exactly enthusiastic, about our odds of survival. No. Rogue traders have a reputation for being, or at least employing, very scary people. Yes, they do. Plus, an entire ship of untrained psychers was a terrifying thought. It tends to cause problems, yes. Ours were bad enough alone. Still, we were guardsmen. Facing certain death for unappreciative superiors is what being a guardsman is all about. This is true. None of us. So far, favorite character in this whole thing is Twitch. Twitch. Twitch is my spirit animal. And hi, Iron. Really enjoyed the shuttle trip. The pilot was clearly terrified, and the invasive maneuvers made us all nauseous. We have expected to be blown out of space before we got to the ship. But we landed on the hull without incident and cut our way into the interior. While we did this, several other Navy and Arbitais shuttles were doing likewise. This was not a subtle attack, so it was hardly surprising that before we got ten feet in, the ship's alarms started to go off. We knew our business, though, and mowed down all opposition before they got a shot off on us. The assault was going well for all of the teams. We'd seized the engines and main batteries, the main hangars were on the verge of surrender, mm -hmm. and the tech priest was pretty sure he'd located the bridge. Seizing the initiative, he remotely hacked all of the entrances to lock open so they couldn't be shut against us. Unfortunately, those turned out to actually be the doors to the Psyker's isolation cells. Oh, no! The second he opened them, everything went to hell. <laughs> Literally. Ghostly images filled the air, nice. and the frescoes on the walls started weeping blood. Unearthly screaming came from every direction, no. and a stench that put even Nubby's lack of hygiene to shame emanated from the air vents. No. Our psychers moved forward to try and sort things out before the entire ship got sucked into the warp or something. Let's not. But we wanted nothing to do with a section of spaceship filled with supernatural darkness and constantly fluctuating gravity. No! We still had a mission, though, and since the psychic activity was blocking Vox communication, Sarge took operational command. We needed to get to the bridge which the rather embarrassed tech priest assured us was definitely just a little further past the Psyker holding area. Once there, we needed to find the rogue trader, subdue him, and hit him until he ratted on his buddies. <laughs> the problem was that even though there were other passages to the bridge that didn't go through the Psyker cells, the psychic spillover had turned that entire section of ship into a no-man's land. Just walking in there would be suicide. But Sarge figured that there was a safe way to cross the hellscape if we could only find the right people. Jackson, yes. this is Sarge was pretty sure that any ship carrying a bunch of unhappy psychers would have at least one untouchable on board, just in case something like this happened. I would put the number of untouchable, the number of blanks, maybe four or five? If not higher, 
it, we're talking about a rogue trader here. They're rich. All we needed to do was find out where they were and convince them to take a walk with us. Really? So we had our tech priest do a quick scan to find out if any areas nearby weren't experiencing paranormal activity. Then went to go knock on some doors. <laughs> Sure enough, we found two untouchables hanging out in a cabin, speculating on what all the fuss was about. One of them tried to make a fight of it and got shot for his trouble. But the other... Alright, uh, Tyler, question, are these guardsmen unusually good or is this the average effectiveness? Um, guardsmen? A lot of people shit on guardsmen, but the reality about guardsmen is... Unless you're talking from very specific, specific worlds, I'd say 80% of the guardsmen that are recruited are the best of the planet's military forces. Like, the literal best. There's a, there's a typical army called the PDF, and that usually gets ragged on like nobody's business. But a guardsman is... You take your army rangers, you take your, your British SAS, you take... Um, you, you just take just take the elite the elite group from every single armed forces, and that would be the guardsmen. So guardsmen are actually a lot better than people would think they are. They put any army that we have on the planet here to absolute and pure shame. But it's just the nature of the enemies that they fight. These are just hilarious. They understood that in times like this. All men need to come together and serve the Emperor. How come on our blanks? Not. So we cocooned him in duct tape, threw him over Heavy's shoulder, and set off for the bridge. <laughs> the walk was really quite pleasant as long as you ignored the dents, stains, puddles, and complete absence of any living creature. We waltzed right up to the bridge without any opposition and found it locked down tighter than a sororitas convent when the guard was in town on leave. Wow. While the locked doors might have posed a problem for some of the other boarding groups, Nubby had helpfully attained several of the cutting tools that the shuttle crew had used to open up the outer hull. So, with the tech priest's help, we found a section of wall which was much thinner than the blast door and started cutting our way in. Sadly, even with a breaching shards to help with the final step, a lace cutter is not quick or subtle. Nope. All we found in the bridge after we flashbanged the shit out of it and stormed <laughs> in was a bunch of empty seats and a locked door labeled escape pods. Nice. We used the ship's vox to contact the boss and explain the situation. After he was done bitching at us, especially the poor tech priest, Go figure. he decided that given our lack of success, he would track the trader's escape pod instead of just blowing it out of the sky. Why not? We were to get our damned psychers back and get ready to raid wherever the traitor finally went to ground. So with our duct taped untouchable in tow, we went back into the psychic no man's land and started sorting shit out. The DTU really trivialized everything. It was just a matter of walking up to the psychers, having Doc trank them, then tossing them on a pallet Heavy was pushing. Occasionally, we'd run into a minor demon, or crazed crew member, or obvious demon host, but between the DTU and a liberal dose of laze fire, nothing posed a real threat. Yay. We eventually collected all of the surviving psychers, a few of them were inside out, freaking nut job, <laughs> and found our three psychers a little worse for wear, but ready to go after the rogue trader as soon as we knew where he was going. Psychic Phenomena Count, 23. Shit. Perils of the Warp Count, 5. Ah! The pallet, full of sedated psychers, was turned over to the Arbites along with the DTU. We were sad to see him go. He was like a big, sticky teddy bear that kept us all safe and happy. But he had to stay with the psychers, so we handed him over to the Arbites and headed for the shuttle. The interrogator voxed us with directions to pick up the assassin, who had spent the whole mission getting her nails done or something, and report to an <laughs> Arbitace precinct near some big government mansion. Our interrogator had used his incredible skills and 
brilliant mind to track the rogue trader there, and oh so cleverly pinned secretary such and such as the mastermind of this whole mess. I hope that this interrogator gets popped. Anyhow, Slacker, the Black Templars just after the second founding arrives on Terra with the Eternal Crusader during the High Lords in rebelling with Minotaur's support. Then what would happen? Um, I think Requiem answered your question. Purging with my kin would happen. Oh, God. That is just, uh, that's just, yeah. I think it would be Lincoln Loyalist blurring from the Imperial Palace for about all of 15 minutes. And then it would be over with. Um, thanks, thanks, Slacker. I really do appreciate it. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that many blanks, pure torture for witches, flying jump scare for all others? No, not really. Um, blanks have an area of effect around them, and it would only really affect the Slackers if you put them in close proximity. Purging with my kin, though, Slacker, would definitely be what happened at that point. Our job was to quietly go in and capture the secretary and the rogue trader so they could be used by the Inquisition to sort all this out without causing a massive scandal or minor war. So while the Arbites put up a very discreet perimeter and the tech priest worked with some local engineers to quietly shut down the mansion's communication, the rest of our team planned our infiltration. By this point, Sarge was done with everyone's shit and <laughs> vetoed several complex ruses suggested by the assassin and face. Eventually, they just gave up, and the team was disguised as a group of heavily armed guardsmen and some dangerously unstable psychers. <laughs> That's not a disguise! These weren't exactly the best disguises, but we felt pretty sure that everyone could act their part. Grumbling about obstinate guardsmen and stupid plans, the rest of the team dressed themselves up as officers and good old-fashioned sanctioned psychers. There you go. For our part, we tacked on the insignia of a local regiment and caught some sleep while the rest got their costumes in order. There you go. Uh, Niju, appreciate it, bud. Calm chat for once. <laughs> this is not a calm chat. It never is. When I appreciate it, bud. Thank up, you. We walked right through the mansion's security, pretending to be a local general dropping off some extra protection for his good friend, the secretary. The force prophet isn't here. That's why. That's why we're not trying to nuke Chet at this point. Saad was out of his mind with panic. He was calling in every favor he had to fortify his mansion, and we fit right in with all the others. Yeah, there you go. Our credentials weren't even checked. As soon as we claimed to be reinforcements, we were waved past security and let inside. He even invited the general up to his office to personally thank him for his generosity. Wow. Yeah, Prophet isn't screaming. We walked right into the secretary's offices and presented ourselves to him, while the rogue trader stood behind him and stared at us, boggle-eyed. Nothing good can last forever, and after a few seconds of speechlessness, the rogue trader called the secretary a bloody idiot and opened fire. The rogue trader was a little late, though. By the time he drew his weapons, the assassin had grabbed the secretary, and we had already killed several bodyguards. Nice! We signaled the Arbitace to move in, grabbed some cover, and started a two-way firefight between the trader and security reinforcements. We had him well pinned and had started to flank him when the far door burst open and the traitor's retinue entered the fight. Two of them were already glowing. Oh, that's bad. Once song. again, we found ourselves stuck in the middle of a damn psyker duel. Not again. No, 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 no. Uh, slacker, Sebastian Yard, Kaifus Kane, or Ebron gone. Who would, who, who would, who like to serve under? Um. Hey, put your responses in chat, guys. Me, personally, I'd go with Kyphus Kane because the only way you're dying if you're attached to Kyphus Kane is if you do something stupid yourself because he's going to keep himself safe. So I just stick to him like glue, but just not around him because everybody around him in his particular circle that goes on these crazy things with him winds up getting infested by gene stealers or dying in some horrible manner. But I'd like to be in his. I'd like to be in his regiment. 
I'm just saying. Just saying. Meanwhile, the Arbites moved in to detain everyone, and without direct orders from the secretary, none of the security forces felt inclined to argue with the Arbites APCs. No, you don't Back do inside, that. Heavy was mowing down reinforcements with his stubborn. Twitch was nailing anyone who left cover, and the rest of us were steadily advancing on the traitor and his psychers. Surprisingly, the two enemy psychers were holding off all three of ours, and aside from a few phenomena, neither side appeared to actually be doing anything. Eventually, our slow advance got us a good shot on the traitor and his retinue, pushing the psychers to try something desperate. Mm. Oh no. Face collapsed, but one of the traitor's psychers burst into flames, taking a pair of retainers with him. In response, Nutjob and Snitch doubled down on the last psyker, until suddenly Nutjob fell to the ground screaming, and one of the last retainers did likewise. Suddenly, the retainer got to his feet and tackled the last enemy psyker to the ground and started beating the shit out of him while giggling. That's while bad. While we all watched this, Nutjob got to his feet, drew his sidearm, and shot Heavy in the back of the head. A second shot was fired at Twitch, but a quick dodge saved him. Unfortunately, the second he stopped covering the traitor, a round hit him in the back. Ow. While this happened, Sergeant Nubby downed the last retainer and the traitor disappeared with a loud crack. Immediately afterwards, the enemy psyker stopped moving. Doc ran towards Twitch and Heavy, and both the possessed retainer and Nutjob collapsed again. While Doc started patching up Twitch, Snitch collapsed in exhaustion, and Nubby headshot the psyker and the retainer that had been attacking him. Okay. Sarge scanned the room for the traitor, and with a tired giggle, Nutjob began to sit up. Immediately, the injured Twitch drew his sidearm and emptied an entire clip into the little bastard. That good. No one commented on this. F for disrespect for nut job. And X for heavy. You should say Kane stuck it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, Sean, you're right. Sergeant Nubby slowly approached the door to the bathroom attached to the office. Right as they reached it, a voice from inside announced, I would like to surrender to the Inquisition and put myself and my ship at their disposal in this current investigation. Really? Both Sarge and Nubby ignored this and started prepping a breaching charge. Before they finished, they heard the assassin, who had been hiding with the secretary behind a filing cabinet, calm the interrogator and tell him that the target had been captured and the traitor was surrendering. The interrogator ordered Sarge to accept the gentleman's surrender and escort him to the shuttle. With a weary sigh, Sarge removed the charge and relayed the message. After a few seconds, the rogue trader opened the door and smugly declared, I knew we could work together. This was such a tragic misunderstanding. Yes. Whereupon Nubby yelled, He's got a gun! And Sarge blew his head off. <laughs> the interrogator was not happy. Deep for disrespect. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> Happy. That was the end of our part of the investigation. Yeah, I bet. Doc got Twitch stable and patched everyone else up, while Sarge collected Heavy's body and Nubby looted the corpses. Yay. It was sort of awkward sitting there and waiting for the all clear from the Arbitace. The secretary was moaning and crying in a very annoying way, and the rest of the team kept shooting us death glares while they struggled to restrain him. We offered to help, but they refused us for some reason. Mm -hmm. The mood was not improved by Nubby making some truly horrific noises as he tried to pry something out of the traitor's corpse. Uh. In the end, he had to borrow Doc's bone saw. Eventually... The Arbitace finished clearing the mansion, and a team escorted us back to their precinct. Mm -hmm. A flyer came and picked up the secretary, along with the assassins, Snitch, and Face, and hauled them off to some secure facility somewhere. We weren't told anything. 
we were definitely on the interrogators shit list. Yes. Final psychic phenomena count, 28. Final perils of the warp count, 7. We hung out with the Arbitace for a few hours, and they were nice enough to give us some food and help so Twitch up while we waited. After a while, a shuttle came for us, as well as, to our surprise, the Tech Priest. Yay! It took us up to the interrogator's ship. The ride-up was pretty somber. Heavy was dead. Both his and Nutjob's corpses were in the hold, and we knew the interrogator was furious with us. Not even Nubby's jokes about the selling price of second-hand gold teeth or his reenactment of the rogue trader's death could cheer us up. When we got back to the ship, we were treated to a long lecture about how our incompetence had ruined the interrogator's carefully laid plans. Mm -hmm. We were told how Sarge's disobedience had removed a vitally useful source of information, Really, how our poor decision-making had killed a valuable teammate, and how the tech priest's mistake on the ship had jeopardized the entire mission. Okay. He also made several remarks about our general behavior, mm. attitude, hygiene, and education, then finally pointed out that if only we had acted as professionally as the rest of the team, Heavy would still be alive. Oof. If the bastard didn't have remote control of the ship's security servitors, Sarge would have probably killed him. Yeah, I don't doubt that. In the end, we were ordered to pack up and return to the shuttle. We would be returning to Oak's ship on a naval transport while the investigation was finished with the aid of the Arbitace and local ADMAC. A secure data slate containing a summary of the investigation so far, as well as a detailed critique of our performance, was sent along with us. Nice. It came with a dire warning that Oak would be expecting the slate and any attempt to accidentally lose it would go <laughs> poorly. So we packed up our gear and heavy and boarded the shuttle. However, as a final afterthought, we propped Nutjob's corpse upright in the bathroom where it would hopefully scare the shit out of that damned interrogator. <laughs> the trip back was a lot better than the trip out. None of the Navy boys bothered us, and we bonded with the tech priest over our mutual hatred of that bastard interrogator. Mm. So, aside from Sarge's usual drills, we mostly just lounged around and came up with ideas for how to change the report after the tech priest finished hacking the secure data slate. Very few pieces of technology can resist a tech priest with a month of travel time on his hands. No, I doubt so. Before the trip was even halfway done, he had it cracked open and ready for a little judicious editing. Okay. There was a strong sentiment to wipe the whole thing clear and replace it with a picture of a butt and a note that said, blah, 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 I'm a gigantic tool, blah, blah, blah. But cooler heads prevailed. We simply removed all negative references to ourselves from the report and rewrote the disciplinary note to simply say that we were no longer needed and were being released back to Oak. Nice. As an afterthought, we went through the entire report and dialed the interrogator's self-praise up to 11. Nice. We hoped it would help him come off as a complete tool to anyone who read the report. I think that would be it anyway. Slacker, appreciate, the, appreciate it, bud. Which promo would you rather serve under as a non Astartes? Okay. Is that, that, that's not even really a question, is it? Um, v for Vulcan, guys. Vulcan in the chat, because that is... No, I would not be under Alfarius. No. I wouldn't be able to tell if I was Alfarius, and then I'd get screwed with. That's just how it would go. Sanguinius? So, yeah, Sanguinius or Vulcan, but I lean more towards Vulcan. Because Vulcan gave his Legionnaires family time. And if Vulcan's going to give his Legionnaires family time, he's going to give his Guardsmen, he's going to give his Menials, he's going to give everybody family time. Eventually, we arrived back at Professor Oak's giant spacefaring inquisitorial school, which was currently orbiting some random agro world. We dropped off the data slate, got debriefed, and went to go find our fellow Guardsmen. Sure enough, there were a few of them holding down the little section of the ship that we had claimed back when we arrived. 
We got together, shared some stories, and planned a suitable funeral for Heavy. We called up the tech priest and found our other cog bro still hanging out in engineering, so we invited them both down to the planet with us. Then we got Heavy out of storage, requisitioned a shuttle, mm. and headed down to the agri world to give him a proper send off. In the morning, the cog bros helpfully hauled all of our hungover asses back into the shuttle and got us back aboard before anyone noticed we had left. That done with, we settled in for a few well-deserved weeks of R&R. On some days, a squad would come back with tales of success or failure, and occasionally missing a few men. Other days, a runner would come down and a squad would head out, or a new one would be pieced together. Eventually, the squad's R&R time ran out, so we packed our bags and waited for the runner to come for us. The runner didn't come, though. Instead, one day, as we lounged in our makeshift barracks, a tall man ducked into our room. Mm. He wore dress greens and positively reeked of officer. Nice. In a chipper voice, he greeted us and invited our squad and that strapping young fellow with the sword to join him on a little expedition. He said he was going into a combat zone and thought that we'd enjoy a nice chance to get back into action and solve a few little military problems that are right up our alley, what what. So with a weary sigh, we gathered up the one man in the regiment dumb enough to prefer a sword over a good old-fashioned laser gun and followed our new interrogator to the shuttle. This is the on- Okay. So that is, dudes, where's my psyker? I'm going to answer a question I saw in here a few seconds ago um, from Mr. Reich. Mr. Reich asked, what would happen if psychers were as common as Jedi are in Star Wars? They're actually the same. They're, they're, they actually have the same kind of frequency um, if the psychers aren't more plentiful. Um, in fact, psychers are probably the 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 their criteria that determines a psyker is a lot more loose, a lot more clearly defined than what comes into a Jedi. Um, what would happen though? But yeah, Jedi are Jedi are vastly more rare than. Um, psychers are because you're talking you're talking like specific talents in use of the force versus everything else thank you slacker uh, which traitor primarchy would you rather serve under during the heresy as a non astartes um, oh wow that's a good one which traitor primarch would I rather which traitor primarch I would not go okay Conrad Curse is out. Not a chance in hell would I be on any boat that he has. Flat out. Um, Angron's out because just no. Um, Fulgrim's out because just hell no. Um, that's a really... Mortarian's out because... No... Perturabo would be Perturabo would be at the top of the list at this point. Perturabo or actually Alfarius. Alfarius would be the one that I'd be working with. That's the one I'd rather be under as far as everything else goes as a meet at like as a non Astartes I would serve under Alfarius. Um, I think that has the less check marks for Doom than anything else. And, frankly, I would not be able to stand the stench of Martarian. I don't want to get dragged off and murdered by anything on Angron's ship. I don't want to deal with the general insanity that is Fulgrim. And... Magnus... You're in the warp. No. No. Okay. All right. Yes, I would go with Alfarius. No, Alfarius, you are not Alfarius. You are Alfarius. 
in order to be Alfarius, you have to Alfarius. And in order to Alfarius correctly, you have to be Alfarius. And you're not Alfarius, you're Alfarius. Anyhow. Alright, so let's see. Anyone but Lorgar. <laughs> this is true. Any but Morty for me. Uh, I don't blame you with that. I don't think anybody would willingly go with him. Um, 40K's Mankind is going with their Psychic Awakening due to a thousand psychics being the Emperor's Breakfast every day. This is true. Uh, Jackson, you are Alfarius. Doesn't matter. What would it be like serving under Fakura's Korax? Um, there were some Primarchs. Now, now granted, there's some Primarchs that it wasn't exactly fun being a part, attached to the Legion. But if you were to give me a choice, legitimately, um... I would be in Vulcan's... I would be attached to Vulcan's Legion. Not even a question asked if I was going to do that or not. I would be a part of Vulcan's Legion. I would be Salamanders all day long. Um, if not Salamanders, Imperial Fists. If I had a choice between the two. Because um, the I, I love our glorious Hawk Boy like anybody else. But... Um, no, I would not want to be around for the Black Rage. And I would not want to be around for the Red Thirst because um, I have my reasons. In any case, so F in the chat for Heavy, guys. We have seen the e e end of Heavy. But at the same time, Twitch lives. Alright, so let's talk about what's going to happen in the next couple of days as far as I'm going. Um, I'm going to um, start off my new position on Monday, and I'll start off my regular hours, which is going to be graveyard shift on Tuesday through. Um, well, it could be a six day a week job, it could be a seven day a week job. I don't know yet. It's going to be a substantial amount of money. The good thing about it is I'm able to order my thoughts a lot better. Um, something I've talked, if you've been talk, talking to me about, you know, what's going on with me in Discord, I will say above everything else, I have to have somewhere to go. I have to have something to do. Or else I just can't order my thoughts. I can't. Now, something else is happening on Monday. And that is, and, and everybody's bringing it up right now. Something else has happened on Monday. A fan with too much time is putting out the next episode of Star Wars vs. 40K. Now, um, I am going to contact him via Discord and see if he's okay with me watching something the same day it's released. I'm going to contact him about that because I don't typically like to do that. Unless it's like a company that does the release, I don't typically like to do that. Um, but we'll see if he's okay with it. If he's okay with it, great. If he's not okay with it, I'm going to let it go. Um, and if anything, we'll be checking it out at some point during the at some point in the weekend when I have a day off. Um, we'll be doing that. Second thing, guys, um, it is. I've been streaming for I've been streaming for a little over an hour now. Um, it is hot in here, and typically, like all this, it's just hot in here. I'm gonna try to find new ways to because because of the um, way that my schedule is gonna be changing. Um, I'm gonna find ways to keep putting out stuff that you guys want to see, of course, in the request for reaction channel. But at the same time. Um, I'm going to try to find ways to continue live streaming because I seriously don't know what my schedule is going to look like. And, um, yeah, I'm babbling. I'm babbling. I'm a moron. You guys know this, though. In any case, um, yeah. We're going to be doing Star Wars vs. 40K as soon as I can. As soon as, uh, as soon as I'm able to. Um, I will put it out. If, if it's not going to be... At a time of the day which is um, normal, I want to do it either at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time if it's on the weekend. Um, Pre-Heresy Fulgrim versus post-Heresy Fulgrim. Who would win? Pre-Heresy Fulgrim. Hands down. Hands down, Slacker. Um, and I, once again, I appreciate the hell out of it, man. Um, Pre-Heresy Fulgrim wins hands down. 
Um, and mainly because pre-Heresy Fulgrim ha actually had the discipline uh, as far as martial discipline that post-Heresy Fulgrim simply doesn't have. Post-Heresy Fulgrim gets his ass beat by literally everything. Um, what was I going to say? So, um, yeah, I will know more about what my schedule is going to look like over the next couple of days, and I'll know how everything's going to be. All that being said, thank you guys for joining me. And I'm thinking about doing another short live stream tonight where we do shorts. Short live stream tonight where we do shorts. That's stupid. I took a look at the shorts, the shorts request thing, guys. I literally had that, the bar just, it, it just, like, I, I achieved transcendence looking at that thing. <laughs> In any case... I'm going to take off. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to turn on that air conditioner that's over there. I'm going to cool down because it's about 95 degrees in this room right now, and I am frying. I, I appreciate all of you guys, and thank you guys for joining me. When I started this, when I started everything off, when I started everything off, I, I never thought for a split second I'd wind up in doing stuff like this, live streaming where, you know, 50 people, 70 people, 100 people in some cases will come in and just sit down and spend time with the old man. But, we're here. To defeat Fulgrim, just leave some coke on the table. <laughs> I'll catch you guys next time. <laughs> oh, God.